Welcome to Chongwe. I think like any other district, we are part of those that are responding to the COVID-19 pandemic, particularly as World Vision and uh, buying into the National Response Plan. We are focusing on uh, enhancing preventive uh, message dissemination and also strengthening the health systems as well as building capacity of health personnel and also supporting to children that are affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. We are working with the Ministry of Health, the Council, uh, Ministry of Education and all other partners that are members of the Epidemic Preparedness Committee. The starting point has been to train uh, the relevant people in infection prevention and control for COVID. The district people, after being trained, have since cascaded the trainings to facility level and community level people who in turn are passing on the messages so that as many people as possible can be reached. Now, for all this to happen, other than just building capacity in terms of skills, also the logistical competence has been provided. And so in this respect, we have, as World Vision, provided several supplies to health centers, to schools, and to other partners that we are working with. So we are working with the church in responding to the COVID-19 pandemic through the pastor's fellowship. So we have trained uh, a number of pastors through the pastors' fellowship for all the three programs, uh, who are also being supported with logistics to go out there and be part of the many people and partners that we are working with. Right now, as I speak, we are running a radio program where the pastors' fellowship are coming through and disseminating the message. Shall we all pray? Our God and Father, who art in heaven, we want to thank you this morning for according us this opportunity, my loving Father, to come and worship you this morning. Father, we thank you for your presence, and we thank you for giving us the, the good health that we have the energy to share thy word this morning. We invite thy Holy Spirit, my loving Father, that as we begin our devotion, may you begin with us, you do with us and end with us in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I pray with full of thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. 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 Um, I would like to thank our brother for that wonderful prayer, um, preparing us to receive the wonderful word of God even in this time when we need our hearts to be filled with hope. But before we do that, we have two hymns that we're going to share with you from Chongwe Cluster, one of our favorites. The first one is Konse Kantwala in Bemba. And the second one, there is a fountain filled with blood in English. Thank you. Enjoy the hymns.
case someone is um, Romans 5 5. The Bible says, <coughs> And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit which is given unto us. The Bible is telling us that hope does not make ashamed. <coughs> no matter what we have gone through this time of COVID, there is a lot that has happened. People have lost jobs. People have lost their businesses. People have lost their lives. But the Bible tells us that hope maketh not ashamed. My encouragement to every one of us here this morning is that as long as we keep our hope in God, for this organization is an organization that believes in God, and we are the hope carriers to those that are crying outside. And this is the reason why we need to encourage ourselves this morning. And the Bible is very clear to tell us that the hope uh, uh, does not make everyone ashamed. Just keep on the hope. I'll, I'll show you hope by my own definition from Scripture. It says um, uh, it's a living force that you draw from the living weight to give living proofs. It's a living power or a living force that you draw from the living word, which is the word of God, to give a living proof. So there is life at the end of it. So we must keep on hoping. Hallelujah. Amen. We must keep on hoping. And I can assure you, there have been many pandemics before. Yes, we have been hit. Yes, a lot has happened. And there has, what has happened before? But the people hope. That's why we are here today. If we can hope again, we'll be somewhere tomorrow. Hallelujah. Amen. So uh, just like you, the Bible tells us in Hebrews 11 verse 1, it says uh, uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now, listen. Faith cannot work without hope. Hope is like a fertilizer or a springboard where you step to another place. So if we hope in God in this time, because there has been a lot of uh, 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 sad news circulating, a lot of the dead we have seen on television, on social media and the like, and that people are living in fear. But the good news I have this morning to someone is that there is hope. And if we can just hold on, even the tiniest rope, as long as you have hope in God, it's, a, it's the most difficult thing to deal with someone who has lost hope. Many people you see uh, are hanging themselves, it's because they have lost hope. One of the last things you can lose is hope. If you can hold on to hope, I can assure you, things can change, no matter how the condition, how the situation can be. There's a lot. I know there are people who are feeling it. You are used to meet the people in the field to attend to them. You have been wondering, but we have not been doing How are they? The, the, the good news I have is that just have hope in God. And I can tell you things will get better. Things are going to get better. Our God is alive. Uh, we sang very powerful hymns that are showing us that there is hope. There is a fountain. Something is flowing. That is what um, I understand from that hymn. There is a flow of, of, of good things that God has for us. And that's why we have to pray for different people that are involved in all this situation where we are in. The scientists that are working on uh, finding the medicine, if they will, or the vaccine. Where, uh, the the frontline staff, uh, uh, somebody was saying everyone is a frontline person. Because we meet everyone. And we don't know where they are from. But there are others who have jumped like on the fire. They are right at the middle of all things. They, why do you think they are there? They are the people that are bringing hope to someone who may give up. And that is the, the, the energy I want us to go with from this place after this. Now, what is hope? Hope is the sustainer of life. Hope shows you the possibility of achieving what God has. That's what hope. Hope shows you the possibility that you can achieve this. If you lose hope, you have lost everything. Anyone who is starting even to build with one brick, the hope is that the one day, one brick will turn to a big house. If you lose hope, you look at the brick and say, what can this do? You can never go anywhere. No matter what has happened, I can tell you, I thank God this is a Christian organization and everyone here is a believer. You believe in God, you have faith in God, and you faith without hope, is obsolete. It cannot work. It's like a husband without a wife, you cannot have a child. A man without marrying a wife, you cannot. So hope is a, is, is a, is a womb. It's a place of conception. 
where your faith can produce. If faith has to produce, there must be hope in place. And that is why we are talking about hope in this time. I can tell you the truth. I've counseled people in this time. You know, pastors are the ones who face challenges. Someone comes and says, uh, I was in Osaka. Someone says, no, my relative has just been removed from the quarantine place, but we have told him to wait not to come to this house. There is a stigma. People are going through challenges now. Here is someone who is excited to meet the family. They tell him, wait. We are still all discussing how we will come you. I spoke to the family. I told them the fact that he has not died with COVID. That is the good news. That is the assurance that there is something good. And the fact that they have tested him. If you believe that God can take care of you the way he has taken, this man left this same family. And you have tested negative. He was the only one who was positive. They have kept on checking you. Why should you reject him today? I was in the thick of things now. I was not prepared for it. Just received the call. Uh, can we come and pick you? Ah, pick me for what? No, there is this situation, otherwise we are not ready to welcome him. Ah, and that's the husband, for only information. And the other family members were afraid, no, we don't want our daughter to die. Ah, who has told you that you died? Thank God we managed to reconcile the family, and they are back together, praying together, eating together. There is hope. Can you imagine what people are going through all this COVID? We may just see it on the surface, but there's a lot happening. I was surprised. And I, I assured them, I said, the, my sister, the fact that uh, this, your husband did not die is enough for you to thank God that he has kept him. Because many people have died. Many people are still struggling. And now that he has come back, did you know that he's going to come back? Or I asked her, did you want him to come back? Says yes, now he's back. And thank God they are still together. And we discovered that uh, there is discrimination going on. There are people that are being stigmatized. And you know, it, is, it can be worse if the person has self-stigma. Because the, to recover by yourself is the most difficult thing. Than when you speak it out. And we need to go out there and hear what the people are saying and give them hope. We must be the torchbearers of hope. The Bible has told us that hope maketh not ashamed. Remember the story of Abraham in Romans chapter 4, uh, beginning from verse 17. There was no, it was a hopeless situation. Hundred years, you are told you'll be a father of many nations. Can you imagine the mockery he was going to go through? Many, no, no one can mock who this time around. Planes stopped flying. Trucks stopped entering. Buses, you go to the board, I want to cross to Zimbabwe, they have closed. You have all the things, the merchandise, you are not going with them. They may carry the virus. And everyone was shut in their places. Even where we get the help, where we can say, okay, help us here, we are crying. They were challenged. And that is why we need to place our hope in God. That is why we need to look uh, from the hills where our help comes from. Abraham was in a hopeless situation. Who today, at the 100 years, you are told you will be a father. Who can believe that? But the Bible says, Abraham, against hope, he believed. That was the man. The wife was uh, 90. The Bible describes that the womb was dead. But let me tell you one thing. When there is hope, even what has died can receive life, can receive strength. When something is in a state of uh, 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 where it, it is losing life, when you have hope, it can come back to life. I can imagine the mockery Abraham was walking at the market, say, look at the father of nations. The man was old. I don't know if the wife was going to the market. I'm trying to picture. I like reading the Bible with pictures. I like to picture what was happening there. I, I relate to what is happening now. But the Bible is very clear. The man staggered not in uh, his faith in God. The Bible says Abraham staggered not in his belief. He kept on giving glory to God. And that's why I like doctors. Even when they know that the situation is bad, they'll keep on smiling. Those are people who give hope. And this is what we need to carry as children of God. As we go out, we must go out there and assure the people. Yes, there is a challenge, but don't give up. Yes, there is this situation, but don't give up. I read the story of a man who fell from the, the mountain, and he just hooked on a stone. And he, he was thinking he was still going down. 
and was crying. When someone reached near, he said, yes, my friend, the ground is just near. He couldn't believe. Until they had to hold his leg and he stepped it on the ground. Please, you are closer. You are new. <laughs> but you, you can imagine, it was just saved by the cloth that hooked on a, on a stone. And somebody survived. You have something to hold. Now, let me tell you one thing. We have something we can look to that can give us hope. We, we have been in situations. Everyone has been in a situation of his own. We have different challenges. But you came out. Why should we give up now? There is hope. I can tell you. When HIV came, I remember those days, there were no handshakes. I remember I was in the village. And we are told one of the people in the nearby villages was found to be HIV because suspected. Because those days when you were slim, you were suspected to be HIV. <laughs> and they said, no one should enter that village. Don't shake hands. Don't draw water there. Make sure, uh, I, I remember one time somebody came to drink water. They said, can you go and throw that cup away? That's how bad it was. And it looked like it would never change. Where are we today? To be found HIV positive is not a death sentence. Not even to be found with coronavirus is not a death sentence. There is hope. After all, like in this nation, we have a number of recoveries. Why should we give up? Why should we not be a carrier of the message to others that there is a future, there is a hope? Something will come out better. Now listen to me. Before a good thing, if you read in the Bible, before any lifting came, there was adversity in the Bible. There was a challenge. Many people went through challenges. I can't imagine David competing with anyone at that time when he was being picked as king. He was in the bush. Because the, 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 the CEOs were at home, dressed in ties. And the prophet came to pick a king. He said, this one, God says, not this one. I don't qualify like that. He said, but he looks strong, this one, and he looks wise. He says, no, that's not what I see. Next one, he said, this one is an accountant. He says, no, even if he knows how to count money, uh, this is not the one, the one to be king. He said, okay, let me bring uh, a manager. He says, no, it's not about being a manager. Then everyone's feeling, he said, ah, uh -uh, don't we have anyone else? He said, there's a little one, the one they didn't count. That's why he was in the bush with animals. Usually, even in church, you forget the one who plays the music for people to dance. Rarely do they appreciate keyboard players in churches. I've been in many places. It's very rare. He just said, today the service was power. You have forgotten the people who made the service power. It was the story of David. I don't think he was just doing it. He enjoyed what he was doing. If you enjoy what you are doing, God is watching. That's the message. And they, they said, we will not sit down until he comes. When I read that, I said, uh-uh. Some, is this man of God, did he know what was going to happen? He says, we will not sit down until he comes. And he was in the bush. I can imagine, maybe with a container where he gets some milk from the animals, and with his stick, and smelling the animals, because he was with animals every time. You can't differentiate between him. If he sleeps in the same house, you think he's an animal. And David appeared, and God says, this is the one. There are people, why God has kept us, there's a reason, and there's what we are to do in future. What we need is to keep the hope alive and not to give up. It's not time to start confessing negatives. It is time to speak uh, the word of life to people, to assure them as we go out that this can happen. Many times we say, we hear people say, ah, Corona is a tipper, is that this is that? You don't talk like that. You don't talk like that. It's hopeless people who talk like that. People with hope, you can see from the way they speak. It manifests from your, your language. You can't tell someone that you have faith or hope if you have not spoken it. But many people say, ah, you don't talk like that. There is somebody who wants to come out from the hospital, who needs to hear that word that, my sister, by the grace of God, you will come out. And when they hear that, because the body responds to what it hears. Many people don't know that. When hope begins to come, if you see a patient, I've spoken to people, I've prayed for so many people, when I see the way they respond and the, the change of their countenance, you know something is about to change. So we must go out there and assure someone that there is hope even in this season. The assurance is there that God has kept us alive for a purpose. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I, I pray that the, uh, as we go out there, will not instill fear. Because I've seen a lot of fear in people. People are afraid. 
at the beginning, even when you just call, there is a suspect here. We feel there are some signs of uh, the coronavirus. You will see how large cruisers will run with the medics on board to come and pick. When I heard the president to say, all those who have tested positive but they have no signs, please, we can just isolate them from their homes. I said this is hope that something good is coming. Because how do you keep someone, the incubation period has passed, is still testing positive, and there are no signs. Take them out. Give them hope than to, to put them in a, an enclosure. Then they have fear. We must go out with a good news message there to tell the people that they, there is something good coming after this. I know programs have been altered. We no one planned about this. When you started in China, everyone was watching. Ah, okay. Ah, coronavirus, okay. Before you know, you hear it's in Italy. Before you know, you hear it's in Africa. Many were saying it's a white man's disease. Ha! Ah, a lot of black Americans have died. They are black as we are. You can't explain why we are still surviving. Some of these things is a miracle. That's why you can't explain it. But should we be careless? No. We must go out and carry the message to the people as we wait for the best, as we wait for something good. Let's watch our characters. God always told the people how they should conduct themselves. I remember Moses was telling the people, God is visiting you in three days, you must clean yourself. Clean up yourselves. People don't know the scripture. He said, wash yourselves because in three days' time, God will be visiting us. These things have been there. There's nothing new on the face of the earth. Are you aware that there are about uh, 11 strains of the COVID virus? About 11 of them. And only three are prominent. These are the ones that are, including SARS, is among the coronaviruses, in case you don't know. But what has happened now, it can only take God and us to carry his message to the people, the message of hope. And I pray that he, as we go out there, after today, let's tell the people, something good is coming. Every time, it's only those who fall down and not desire to rise up are the ones who remain on the ground. I like members. Even if you squeeze him, he's saying that now we have a large moon. He's down. And we have a to on our head. I think that now we have a large moon. When I wake up, you will see. But you are down now. That's the language of hope. I will still rise up. I'm not going to remain in here. We will come back to normal. I can tell you the truth. As much as there is a so called new normal, then the original normal will come back. And that's why we, are, we, must have, we must keep our hope alive. We must keep our hope alive. There were many people who get, Lazarus died four days. I think deliberately Jesus didn't go there early because they would have said he fainted or he collapsed. <laughs> so he said, let me wait until he starts smelling. Then they are, and they cried. And until they couldn't wait, keep the body, they had to go and bury the man. And Jesus appeared now. He said, didn't I tell you that this sickness is not unto death? but unto the glory of God. And when he appeared there, he says, can you remove the stone? You must do something yourself also. He could have removed the stone. He could have spoken to the stone, move. But he says, you should do your part. Remove the stone. We have a part to do. They removed the stone and he says, and he called him. And Lazarus came back to life. It was a hopeless situation. Completely. He says, if you came, you would not have died. But now look, he's even smelling. I think they were wearing masks also. <laughs> I think so, because the smell was bad. Four days the man has died, it was terrible. And Jesus, the man who gives hope, whom we carry in our hearts, he went there and brought back the man to life. We don't know what we are carrying some of us. You don't know that your word to someone can change the entire life of a person. I can't imagine if somebody never spoke to me when I was told you have a chronic peptic ulcer, your intestines are rupturing. 1996, there's, a, there's nothing we can do, since you, it's like these things are inherited. Ah, so it means, the, what are you saying, doc? Because I didn't understand. They say, uh, you will manage it. I know he was just telling me that uh, there's nothing we can do, you will die with it. But you know, they, they speak hope, they say you will manage it. Ah, okay. But after a while, I discovered things began to change. I, I, the frequency of going to the hospital changed because I was better. So, ah, let me go for a checkup. Maybe you may not know you are dying while you are walking. When I reached there, they checked. They said, ah, 
uh, is this your card? He said, yes. But no, what is here is contrary to what we are finding. Okay, we will refer you to another department, they check you independently so that we see. I began to, to build, my faith was increasing now. My hope was alive. So I'm better. Okay, when they checked, checked, it was completely contrary to what was on the previous file. They are, okay, come back after two months. When I went back after two months, I said, ah, young man, you are fine. You can go. Ah, ah. That's how, I said, can I start eating shima? He says, go and try. Said, okay, I'll try. I was at college. I went to the dining. They, they were on the list of special diet people. I don't know how cabbage is special diet and rice. <laughs> but that is what they call special diet. So I went to get the, the roller mill shima and the pins. And he ate some, and I was fine. So, and that was from 1997. I can remember the very first day I ate in Shima after a long time. 14th June 1997, until today. So, I'm a carrier of uh, the word of encouragement to someone that no matter the condition, there is hope. The only thing, the last thing you must hold on to is hope. That is the last thing you must hold on to. Once it is there, I can assure you, Everything can be based from there. But the one who has lost hope, when you hear someone, ah, I think in Emanji Olopu Fatabe Shribuino, those are statements of someone who has lost hope. You must begin to pump hope back to them. Assure them you can live again. People are saying, uh, all man of medicines, chloroquine, what, all kinds. We hear, what is the information? Let's hope in God that things will be put in order that one day we'll have a solution and one day life will come back to normal. People are waiting for us out there with a message of hope. Somebody blessed me with a megaphone. I went to the market to talk to the people and I'm still going for contact said I can't talk to one to one now because I may be followed. Say I'm breaking the law so the megaphone can help. I stand on the corner, start talking to the marketeers. Start telling them that there is hope. God can still change this situation. Let's believe in him. We are very vulnerable in Africa. We don't have 5,000 hospitals in this country. But what can we do now? We need to believe in God and obey. Hallelujah. Amen. We are going to pray for the nation, for our teams. We are going to pray that God should strengthen us, that God should give us uh, uh, that strength to go out and be a bearer of the message of hope to someone. That we are going to tell someone that, uh, my friend, even yes, the challenge is there. We are not denying that there is a challenge, but the truth of the matter is that there is hope. There is a difference between a fact and the truth. A fact is, a, is proved probably scientifically, but the truth you cannot prove it scientifically. In our case as Christians, the word of God is what we call the truth. When God has spoken, let's believe what he has spoken. Somebody had the vision. Why did they call it world vision? He was in a house, I think, or maybe in the kitchen. And went to share someone, I think me, I'm going to have world vision. They say, ah, are you, are you, are you thinking proper? Go and sleep, you think, you tell me tomorrow. The person wakes up tomorrow, he has written more things. He said, these are the things I want to do. Ah, uh ah. -huh. And today, they are in the corner where you don't know. You pass, I've been in the bush. I check, like a small building, there's a log of world vision. Ah, uh ah, -huh. they are here. So this man was seeing even this far. That's why the Bible says, as far as your eyes can see. I will give it to you. Abraham's eyes never reached the other place. They ended where the grass was. But he, he says, as far as, in short, as long as you keep on extending, I'm going to take you there. If we keep on hoping, we can go as far as we can. In our personal lives, as we serve, as we help the people, we can try our part and let God do his own part. I want us to pray. We'll take about three prayers uh, uh, as a group. We are going to pray. Uh, that God should release the hope upon the nation, should release hope upon the frontline workers. Should you are among the frontline workers. Some of you from here, you on bikes going somewhere. You are meeting people you don't know where they went. They won't tell you where they went. You will find them on the road going to uh, your area where you are working from, and they will stop you. And they know that it's more appetite. And it's an old woman. You want to stop, you want to just leave with an old woman there. You want to help. Maybe she's going at the clinic. Are you not one of the frontline people? What has kept us is just the grace of God. And all I have for you is to tell you there is hope. You cannot be a carrier of hope 
and God forsakes you. No. This is the reason why he has kept us. Hallelujah. So we're going to pray. We'll pray very short prayers. We'll say, Lord, grant this nation hope. Help us to be carriers of hope, even as we go out. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this privilege. We thank you for this time. We thank you, Father, because you have given us to be carriers of hope. Even this nation, Lord, release the reign of hope. Release the reign of hope in the hearts of people. Take out fear in the hearts of people. Let them realize that there is hope. As long as you are on the throne, as long as you have shown us a second day, as long as you take us to each other day that follows ahead of us, Father, there is hope. And that's why we commit everyone, this nation, the leadership, the people running organizations, Father, we commit them in your hands, and we pray that, Lord, grant them that uh, heart to be hope givers. And that's why today we pray that in every heart of frontline workers, even the team for World Vision Zambia, Father, we pray that you give them hope as they take hope to the people, as they take hope to the children outside. In the mighty name of Jesus, we commit everyone, Father, who is in the front lines, those that are meeting people on a daily basis, those that are in contact with people, Father, let them be the carriers of hope. That one day we are going to image that we went through this situation and we came out. The Bible says, even if you go through the waters, even if you go through the fires, say, I shall be there with you. Meaning that we shall go through fires. But the thing is that we are going to come out of those fires. Even this fire of the COVID-19, we are going to come out. And that is why our hope is alive. And that is why we are holding on to our God. Father, thank you that you have given us this privilege to gather and share, to encourage one another, to move from this place and be the torchbearers of hope. And that we know in this situation, the assurance is that you are on the throne and you are helping us. Thank you, Father, even for the organizers of this chapel and everyone who has gathered and those that will be connected. Father, we pray that, Lord, let them carry the message of hope to others. And I pray that you will not leave them. You will reward everyone who is a carrier of the message of hope. We thank you, Father, and we bless your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you so much. God bless you so much. I believe that uh, something is going to happen. We should not give up. Hold on. The last thing you should lose is hope. Don't try lose everything else, but as long as you have hope. The man who sang Amazing Grace, you know the story behind. All the songs we sing, they have a story behind. Someone loses everything, then he says, this kind of grace is amazing. And God has still been doing the same. The Lord bless you, and the Lord bless everyone that is hearing his word. Thank you so much. God bless you. Amen. Wonderful word of God. Thank you so much, Pastor Sakala, for that wonderful message of hope. In this time when we're going through many challenges, I know it's not only COVID. There are many people who have been affected. There are many people who are, have to still stay at home. There are many people who right now, currently, their, their monies are being affected because they are on half pay and the like. So even as we have received this wonderful message of hope, let's also give hope to others. Let's also be hope carriers. Let's also do something that will give someone hope. Uh, we are going to have uh, our sister. She's going to come and close for us in prayer. And we thank you for staying with us up to now, and we pray that you'll be blessed. Thank you. At this point of time, I'm inviting our sister, Brenda Usamba, to come and uh, pray with us. Thank you. I is a cross, and we are praying. Thank you, Jindira Sabatan. I'm going to talk about you. 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 We want to thank you to glorify your name for this day. We want to say thank you, dear Master, for the way that has come at the right time. We know, mighty Father, we are going through a situation with this pandemic. We just want to pray that you, alone, Almighty God, you're going to give us hope and strength to go through this uh, pandemic. I pray that, dear Lord, be with us, even as we are going to disperse from this chapel. I pray that you, alone, Almighty Father, are going to go with us and strengthen us wherever we're going to do. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I pray. Amen. 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 We have two other hymns that we shared that we'd like to share with you and that we'd like you to listen to. 
I pray that you'll be blessed and that you'll be encouraged and you, even as you receive the message of hope, you have hope and you'll be able to give hope to somebody else. Thank you. There is a fountain.